Hi, this is Tyler again from Fluidity Studio, and welcome to the Software License Manager WooCommerce add-on part two. Um, I wanted to give an update on things that I had done to update the plugin, um, make it better. The first version I put out was uh, quick, and it had a lot of issues, um, a lot of code problems. So um, I've corrected things to make things a lot smoother, and uh, made the process a lot better as well. So we're going to get into that. I am not. I am going to skip past all the introduction. If you want to um, see how to fully use the plugin. Um, then you can go watch the first video. This one is going to be basically talking about the updates that have been made and how um, the plugin runs smoother. Okay, so first off, um, before in the in the previous version, the first version released, uh, I was taking the order information, and the only thing I was storing into the software license manager uh, plugin itself was their um, in the transaction ID was the order number, um, and that was referenced back in uh, querying the orders from WooCommerce. However, that made things more complicated and it wasn't as quick and easy as it should have been. So, um, and it, it made into problems down the road. So what I, what I did now is um, upon activation of my plugin, you will get a couple fields automatically added into the um, uh, Software License Manager plugin. And I had talked to them um, through uh, WordPress on their on the uh, forum, and I asked that they um, look further into um, you know working different things in. Uh, and I told them it'd be nice to be able to add some extra fields into their um, ed license editor area, and that would be in the edit add license section. And so they said they could make some hooks and they did in, in turn, quick turnaround time. So um, that really helped. So now when you uh, activate the plugin, there'll be three different fields added in. And there'll also be those um, fields will have places in the software license manager um, area in their database in the license key area. So you scroll down to the bottom and the new fields you will see, so I put in four, is product name, product ID, and product variation ID, and then product variation attribute. So <clears throat> if, of course, if it's a simple product, then you're only gonna get the product name and product ID. If it's a variation product, then you know all these areas will be filled in. So now I can query one place rather than trying to query here and compare the um, transaction ID, so, you know, initially transaction ID against the orders in um, WooCommerce. And so everything is, is here in one place. I can query the transaction ID along with the other four fields I added and verify a product. So now we'll take a look at, we'll go back to the edit license, edit add license section, and we'll see manage licenses and we'll see what one looks like so this top one here was the last one I did and tested and it is a variable product so we'll scroll down first off um, now this was a one domain um, we have the product name then we have the product ID the variation ID and then I'm pulling in the uh, name of that variation and <clears throat> so in in my plugin because um, I needed to hard code things um, I'm restricting it so you need to call the uh, variation name let's go into settings no where is it product attributes and I added an attribute and I called it subscription options so with my plugin if you're going to do variation products um, you'll need to make it subscription options as the the name because it's going to look for that in my code now if you want to change it to something else then you'll have to look for this slug through the code in my plugin and change that 
Um, however, I'm going to uh, have, have an updater um, set in this plugin. So um, that way, if I need to make changes, those using it can get the, the changes quickly and get an update to the plugin. So if you were to change this um, in your version of the plugin, then when it auto updated, you wouldn't get that. So you'll either have to turn the auto update feature off and never get more updates from me or um, keep it as it is and just call your um, your very attribute subscription options. Okay, so let's look at, let's see, what's next? So let's look at a order. Now, if this is if I just came to the site and I'm going to renew a license key or license keys. In this case, uh, initially, when I set this out, um, there was only a way to update one key. So if you were, order, if you were ordering multiple products um, at the same time and they were both expiring and you wanted to come and update, you know, pay for both at the same time, um, then you would only before have the option to enter one key. So now what I've done here is I've just pre-populated this with two um, plugins and I'm going to check to renew license key. And I've added a, um, another option to this, that if you have more than one product with a license key that you are renewing, then separate each key with a comma. So I've pre-copied my two keys just like this with a comma separated. And then I say apply license renewal. And it worked. So if you don't see any messages pop up, then it has worked. And you'll come down here and you'll see that it's verified so what it's gone through in the system is it's verifying the license key um, from the license key manager against the product name here and the product ID. It's verifying all that information. And if it doesn't match, if either one doesn't match, it's going to pop up a warning. So if I cancel this renewal and I come back in and I just paste the two again and I change this one just change the seven to a one and try. Then I get an error that basically says one or more of your product keys were not valid for, or one of your more licensed keys were not valid for product or products. Please check your license section in your account to verify license number and try again. So um, that way they can't just enter some random key and pay for another plugin, you know, if they're trying to update a plugin that they have and they want to go pay for one that maybe costs less on your site and then put in that key and, you know, get it to update this, this stops that from happening. Everything has to match. Otherwise they can't renew the license key. So it resets everything and won't let them put their key in. So everything's good, there's no warning, and you get the information down below displayed on what product it is renewing for. Okay, so next we'll take a look at the emails, um, the, the uh, renew email that goes out, and I'm gonna follow that link as well. So I'm gonna cancel that renewal, and then I'm going to just come in here and clear my cart. make sure it's everything's cleared okay and we're gonna go check out an email so this this email is what would go out here's your basic template and what I've also done now is that it's it searches through and any orders um, that were you know if you had one or more orders that um, that had product licenses that were ordered at the same time and now expiring at the same time, then it will group them together rather than getting a separate email for each. It will group them together into one email. And then when you click on the renew button, then it will um, take them to the website and automatically populate the shopping cart with those products and their license keys. So if you can see below, it lists their keys and their um, uh, shopping cart or their, the product IDs. So we'll take a closer look at that here. So for the simple product, it's going to do their WC license key and it's going to put in 
the keys separated by commas again and it's going to add to cart product 99 and product 98 along with these keys <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this because I'm using I'm logged into this browser so I'm going to use another browser instead of following the link use another browser that I'm not logged into and I'll just paste that up here We'll follow it and it tells me both were added to the cart and there they are product keys if, if one of those keys was wrong then it would have given me a warning so now I'm good to go ahead and up place that order and then of course it would update the license key expiration date to a year from the, this purchase date next we'll look at an email that goes out when the order is completed so your order is completed download your files and at the bottom it says your license key is whatever it is and then with a minimum number of however many sites were purchased um, sites allowed so whatever for that you know if it was a variable product and you have more than one it would list that here Okay, so variable products work the same way, but there is a problem with variable products in that WooCommerce doesn't really have a way to populate um, in an email template like this. They don't have a way to create a link like I do with the simple products that combines multiple variable, variable products uh, in one link to add to the cart. So it generally, if you try to do more in one link, it'll just pick up the last one. So the first one completely gets ignored. Um, and they really don't have a way to do that at this, at this moment. So um, you kind of SOL in that aspect. Um, it will send out an email. Well, if, there's, if there were two variable products purchased at the same time and both expiring at the same time and you got an email, then you're really only going to be able to to get one in that link, unfortunately. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. So you go here, and it's the same starting out with your license key. Add to cart with the product ID. Then you have your vari variation ID. And then what is also required is the attribute that was created. In this case, it's subscription options. And then you need the name of that subscription option. So that gets pulled in automatically. Now that's the problem is that you can't you can't do like you did before and do a comma with the add to cart and add in another ID and do a comma variation ID and then you know a comma it, it nothing works. I've tried it so many different ways and right now WooCommerce doesn't have that option. Uh, everywhere I've looked is basically it comes up with a dead end. Um, you can only do one variation product in a link. So. Um, another another system is doing it where you can there's a, another plugin out there that um, lets you save email carts you can basically go in and create a create a cart add things to the cart and then save it and it creates some sort of certificate and then that's what gets mailed out or emailed out to somebody and they click on that certificate and it comes back to the site and somehow knows to populate those particular items um, but that's way more than this plugin needs. So um, anyway, this is the current option um, down the road. If WooCommerce gets away, it uh, sets up a way where we can do multiple variable products in one link, then I will definitely get that updated. But for now, that's the issue. And the likelihood of, honestly, of someone purchasing, you know, more than one variable product from one site um, is probably pretty small. I purchased I've purchased plugins all over, and I generally it's like one per site. I'm I'm getting one from one place, getting one from another, so um, it may not be as big of a problem. But we are stuck with the way it is right now. Now the other issue I had was when you initially purchase products that it would only give one license key. Um, Per, uh, for one order. Um, if you were to purchase multiple products that had license keys, then um, initially you'd only get one license key created. And I've changed that. 
And with that example um, I did where I added the two keys, we'll take a look at the back end again. For those two, which were these two here, and if we look into the first one, we'll see that the transaction ID is 306. And if we go back to this one, transaction ID is 306. So both got added when we ordered them at the same time. Both products got a license key created individually and they got their individual information saved. So there's the product name and the product ID for WP Music Albums and 306 for the transaction ID. And if I go back, just so I can show you, we have 306, we have Payflow Donate, so, and product ID of 99. So both of those, like I said, ordered at the same time, and now they're both getting generated product IDs for them. I'll go back to my account. Okay, and then we'll go to licenses. And then we can see all the products I've been testing here. Um, there was a five site license, so this was a variable product that had five sites um, in that option. And we can go and click on this and view the order. We can see that the uh, subscription options was a five site license for $100. And in these testing modes, I've been using um, check payment just because it's quicker. I don't have to go to PayPal, do a you know, um, sandbox and anything like that. And um, the issue with doing testing is that when you are doing sandbox, there's no confirmation that you know payment was received. And of course, um, pay because the sandbox doesn't do a, um, a key back to WordPress and let them know, that the product was purchased. So it always puts it in a hold status. And um, you can you can override that by adding, by uncommenting code I have here in the WooCommerce on completed order.php. You'll see this code here is automatically commented out. But if you were just to drag this up here, then you would activate that um, complete order. So you're just gonna auto complete any order. And if you, no matter if you did it through PayPal um, sandbox or you did it through check payment, this automatically completes the order for you and uh, in testing. And then when you, you know, ready for your plugin to go, your site to go live with this, then you would just uncomment it out and send that back up so that you're not auto completing an order and someone's payment didn't go through, but they got their key and they got their download of the product and all that, but the payment never went through. So this is for testing only, and I will make sure I notate that, uncomment this for testing only uh, before I put this out. But I think that that is about it um, as far as the changes to the plugin, and it just runs more efficient. And now that you can enter more license keys um, at, the, at checkout, um, makes it much easier as well. So I've worked out all the bugs that I can find. I think it's working rather nice, and I'm excited to get this out for everybody to use. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it.